The goal in today's video is to use one of Ken Hub's premium features called a study unit to help us understand and learn the anatomy of the oral cavity. So if you've never seen our study units before, this is a one-stop shop where we put everything you could possibly need in order to understand something in one place. Right? So you will see videos, you will see quizzes, you will see um, our atlas images, and then as we scroll down, you can see summary tables and we can even have an exam to make sure you can test your knowledge and we also place articles that and those by the way are 100 percent free and we will go ahead and link the article to the oral cavity to this video so you can go ahead and check that out it'll be in the description below but all of this is assembled into one place which is our study unit and what i want to do is i want to focus here on these atlas images now what I want to do, and this is actually really cool, it's one of my favorite things we can do in the study unit, is if I click this um, magnifying image, what we can see is, you know, you have the image itself right here, and then on the left you can see pretty much all of them assembled, and we can start going through them one by one. And so, again, we are here to learn the anatomy of the oral cavity. And first up is what is called the oral vestibule. And so this is the space between your lips and your cheeks and then your gums and your teeth, right? So it's like you can imagine like you have there's a space just in there and you can kind of like I'm not going to stick my fingers in my mouth, but you could kind of like slide your fingers around in that space. All of that would be the oral vestibule, but you also then have the gingiva, right? So a lot of people have heard of the gingiva before because they've heard of gingivitis. This is just your gums. All right, so this is a this is soft tissue, and this is going to just be um, you know, lining just above and below those teeth, right? Because we have the upper teeth, and then we have the lower teeth, and so the teeth would also be included inside of the oral cavity. We just aren't particularly highlighting them right here and right now. Um, but then we have what's called the frenulum. So there's actually actually going to be two frenulums. You have the one that's on the upper lip. And then we can see the one on the lower lip. And what's cool is also it's zooming in here so we can get a really clear view of exactly what we're looking at. But the frenulum is what connects the lip to the gingiva and it makes it so they're not just like slipping and sliding all over the place. If you do not have those attachments, the lips are much more free moving and that's not gonna work when you are talking, when you are eating, those types of things. So the frenulum is absolutely essential in order to just hold your lips in place. All right, so then from there, we then meet what's called the oral cavity proper. Because when we say in the oral cavity, I mean, right now we're talking about, I mean, you could make an argument that a lot of this may not be technically oral cavity, but it really just kind of depends on how you want to define things. And so right now we're looking at the oral cavity proper. And there's several things in here, so we're gonna kind of dive into those. And the first is what is called the hard palate. The hard palate is what you would call the roof of your mouth. And this is actually made up of two different bones. I mean, technically, if you want to you know, be super accurate, it's four because you have one maxilla, two maxilla, and then if we went all the way back there, I can't really point to it, it's what's called the palatine bones. There's two sides to them. But what's happening, and I want you to look very closely here, you can see there's a ridge line, and you can feel this on your own mouth. Go ahead. Hey, just put your tongue right down the center. You can feel that ridge line. That is where the maxillae from both sides of your face are coming together along with the palatine bones, and they are forming the hard palate. This is what separates the nasal cavity from the oral cavity. And so you probably have heard of a cleft palate before. That is when there is a failure to fuse for those maxillae and possibly even the lips because you can also have a cleft lip, although they you could have one or the other, but typically if you have a cleft palate, you're also going to have a cleft lip. But still, this is something that will form in utero and then completely solidify. But that this is the fusion point essentially is right in that, mid, in that middle. And this is what we call the hard palate. We then have then what's called the soft palate. Right? The soft palate is exactly what you think it is. It's soft, right? But there's, there's multiple things in here. Um, but this is basically going to help close off the, what's known as the nasopharynx. So, I mean, imagine as you are swallowing and drinking, you want the food and drink to go down, right? That's the whole purpose is you want them to go down into the throat and down the esophagus and so, or um, so on and so forth. What you don't want them to do is go up. 
And I know you've had that happen to you before. Maybe you were drinking and you started to laugh and fluid went up. That's because the soft palate didn't do its job as you were laughing, right? Its purpose is to kind of guide things down to go the proper direction, but it also helps to close off during swallowing the nasal cavity because there is a passageway that connects the nose to the back of the throat through the nasopharynx. It is the job of the soft palate to block that off and again direct it. Now, there is this thing that is hanging off of it, which we can zoom in, and this is called the uvula. And the uvula is there to essentially, I mean, I like to think of it almost like an IV drip. Imagine this thing just like dropping little, <laughs> little droplets of saliva to help keep the throat lubricated. It's also going to help, you know, direct things down as well because it's belonging to the soft palate. But this is going to be the uvula. And what's interesting is you can actually see in certain, I forget the numbers off the top of my head, but it's possible for this to be bifurcated and it can actually be split. And so you can see two of these uvulae um, hanging in the back of the throat. And then we meet the body of the tongue. And we do say the body of the tongue um, or the surface of the tongue uh, here is because the tongue is a massive structure, massive structure. There's a lot going on here, but this is where you would find things like taste buds, um, which by the way, just quick little teaser. If you've ever heard someone say like, oh, that's your sweet, that's your salty, that's your sour, that's your bitter. It's hogwash. That is not true. <laughs> that is not how it works. Uh, and but that's a, that's a di that's we'll we'll discuss that a different day. I just want you to know you can taste everything all over the place. But this is going to be your tongue, and the tongue takes up a massive amount of space. And so what you're seeing here is really just the surface as it's kind of nestling in between those lower um, those lower teeth. And then we meet what's called the isthmus of fossies. Now the isthmus of fossies, so an isthmus is kind of like um, a strip of land between two bodies of water. And so the, the, what the isthmus of fossies is going to be is basically the transition from what we'd call your oral cavity, um, or you could just say mouth even really, the mouth towards what's known as the pharynx or your throat. And so this is, we're gonna see, it's, it's basically just like this, again, thing that's like a strip of land just between two separate areas. And that's exactly what this is. And so what we see here, this is going to be the palatoglossal arch. So the palatoglossal arch is exactly what you think it is, right? You can see this archway here and palatoglossal, this is literally just the end of the mouth, right? So th like this is it. This is where that mouth, this is gonna actually run down towards the tongue. Um, while the isthmus of fossies, so if we look back at this, the isthmus of fossies is right after that palatoglossal arch. We're gonna see it includes a different arch, but this, by the way, goes all the way up and goes around. It's kinda like it even includes part of the bottom, or the, I shouldn't say bottom, but that more dorsal aspect of the tongue. Here we're talking about just strict archways, and if you ever just like, I don't know, want to investigate your own <laughs> uh, mouth anatomy, you could always just stick your tongue out as you're looking in the mirror, maybe you're brushing teeth, and you can see that there are gonna be clear archways. That is this, this is the palatoglossal arch. Again, this is kind of like just the end of the mouth. But then behind it, we have the palatopharyngeal arch. And the palatopharyngeal arch is also part of that isthmus of fossies. But this is where we can officially say we are now in the oropharynx. So remember, the pharynx is your throat, right? So everything you can see back here, in fact, I think it's the next image. It's, I'm skipping one, I'll come back to it. You can see right here, this is called the posterior wall of the pharynx. This is literally the back of your throat. Pharynx means throat, but we can divide the pharynx into three different sections, the naso, oro, and laryngo pharynx. Um, the, if we go back to that palatopharyngeal arch, this is the beginning of the pharynx. We are now entering into that oropharynx. But then you're also going to see this thing right here. And this is a tonsil. This is called the palatine tonsil. So there's actually three different tonsils. You have the lingual tonsils, you have the pharyngeal tonsils, and then you have the palatine tonsils. But this is the one that most people are familiar with. You can see from this image here, that it's just gonna be on either side because this is made of lymphoid tissue, meaning that there are immune cells inside of this area. And so if, it, it basically you can think of it almost like an air filter of sorts where what it's trying to do is you're breathing and eating, things are just going into your mouth. It's trying to screen it and catch potential pathogens. And then, and hopefully what it could do is uh, filter them out. It could actually, you know, you, again, it's immune system. Um, but that means it also can, get swollen and if it gets swollen then you can start to close this entire area off and then we talk about having 
uh, swollen tonsils. And then again, we've already seen this, but we can just mention it. This right here is that posterior wall of the pharynx. So all of this, all of this, and in fact, I'm gonna actually get out of this right here. And if we go up, I believe, yes, we can see that's also part of this study unit is an image that kind of puts everything together and you can see just how much is going to be included inside of the oral cavity. This is, you know, it, you know oftentimes when I'm teaching this in the class, people are like, I had no idea there was so much to the mouth. It's like, well, yeah, well, you know, that's, that's how anatomy goes. Anatomy is all about identifying every small little piece that um, you could possibly imagine. But again, this is a study unit. And so again, we can kind of like just scroll down. You can see there's more here. We could even take an exam. And then if you really wanted to, if you were um, using this study unit, you could then go to the tongue and make sure you are understanding everything that goes with that. But my hope is that you really enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to head on down there and hit the like button. Remember also, if you scoot on over to the description, you're gonna see a link to this article here, which is 100% free on the oral cavity. But while you're down there also, why don't you go ahead and leave us a comment. Let us know what else you'd like us to cover in future videos. But I really appreciate you hanging out with me and I will see you next time.